Hello, physics friends. Uh, today we're going to be talking about friction. We've all heard the term friction before. What is friction? Maybe you understand what makes more friction, less friction. You know, there's friction in relationships, uh, friction, all over stuff. I got a couple fun pictures here. Uh, this one over here I, I like. Uh, it's from the webcomic XKCD. It's one of my it's one of my favorite geeky comics. And it looks as though somehow productivity plummets to negative when the coefficient of friction gets closer to zero. Today, by the end of this lecture, you're going to understand what is the coefficient of friction. What does coefficient of friction mean? Um, what does this cat have to do with anything? Uh, what is this funny letter here? What, is this, what does any of this have to do with friction? So hopefully by the end of this, I'd like you... We, that's the goal, is to understand what is friction, how do we make friction bigger or smaller, what does friction depend on, and what is this cat and this coefficient of friction stuff we've been reading. So, first of all, there's a couple of definitions that I want to go through. Uh, friction, what friction is. Uh, friction is the opposition of motion caused by... Um, Well, it's caused by uh, two or more surfaces that are rubbing together. Uh, so friction, first of all, it's a force that opposes motion. Um, it's caused by two materials rubbing together. There are two different types of friction. There's uh, what's called static friction and kinetic friction. Um, kinetic friction, first of all, static friction kind of comes first. Static friction is when, when you're starting to push something. You can see in part A, you start pushing on something. You exert some force of a push. And friction is opposing you. Now you if the if the couch doesn't move they're equal and opposite so you're you're having to overcome what's called static friction static friction is the friction when s that you have to overcome to get something to move uh still friction um th that's what the word static means the word static means that it's still um so as you start pushing harder and harder and harder friction will oppose you and there's a limit it reaches its limit and then once you overcome that the thing will start to move now if it's moving at a constant speed oh boy if you're moving at a constant speed so if if you are moving at a constant speed so that means my acceleration is zero now we know that it, it, when the acceleration is that means that the force of the is equal to the force and this while you're moving this friction that's occurring while you're moving this is the what's called kinetic friction and as you start pushing kinetic friction there's a maximum it reaches some force of friction that's the max and, and you can push more than that and if you do that, that means that you're accelerating. That there is some acceleration occurring, pushing it forward. Now, um, let's figure out exactly how to find it. There is there's a formula that we're going to be using in uh, to calculate friction, and it goes like this: uh, the force of friction is equal to this. There's a Greek letter. And it's the Greek letter mu. Mu. Uh, times the normal force. And this Greek letter mu, first of all, uh, it's a number that is uh, between 0 and 1. It's unitless. 
And what it stands for is how slippery or sticky a surface is. What it stands for, it stands for the, it's the coefficient of friction. And now that cat up there might be starting to make some sense. Going back to that initial picture that I have up here, this cat that's down here. Mu, get it? Mu. Uh, and it is the coefficient of friction. So. Some things about the coefficient of friction. Uh, if you have a coefficient of zero, it's impossible, first of all. But it's really slippery. So having a coefficient of friction of zero means that there's infinitely slipperiness. There you get there's no friction whatsoever. It's impossible. On the other hand, going over here to have a coefficient of friction of one, this is also impossible. That's why I didn't write less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, because they can never be 0 or 1. This is impossible. But this would be really sticky. So think of like, I don't know, trying to drag a 45 pound weight across a rubber floor, you know, something that's really sticky. Uh, your book has a table of coefficients of friction in your in your book and you'll see that there's this coefficient of static friction down here and a coefficient of kinetic friction you'll always note that the static friction will always be bigger than the kinetic so what that says is this it's always it's harder to get something to start moving It's, it's always harder to get something to start sliding. Kind of like I, I equate it to a snowball. When you're a little kid, you got a big snowball. It's really hard. you got to push, 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 boom. And then once the static friction gives away, then you have kinetic friction. So, for instance, like rubber on dry concrete. This would be a car on dry concrete. You've got a coefficient of friction static, 0.8, sliding, 0.65. So when you're driving, as your wheels are rotating around, the coefficient of friction is 0.8. If you throw your brakes on and then you, you start to skid, this is where you have kinetic friction. This is why where anti-lock brakes come into play. Like it, The moment that your car starts to skid, you have less turning ability, less friction to turn you than if you could keep your wheels from not moving. Like 30% in fact. It's, it's quite sizable. So that, that's how anti-lock brakes work. And then if you got the concrete wet, uh, your, your coefficient goes down in both cases. Um, wood on wood, and it depends how well it's sanded. Uh, steel on steel dry, steel on steel with oil, and you get down to here to like almost no friction. And then we could get like a hovercraft, and it would be like almost zero, you know. But there's still air resistance. Air resistance doesn't play into friction, but because they don't actually touch, there's no real friction that's going on there. Um, so that's kind of the the main idea here. Now, the bigger your normal force is, here's the next one. This is the supporting force provided by a surface. That um, the bigger your normal force is, and then the bigger the coefficient of friction is, you multiply those, you're going to get a bigger force of friction. So those are the two things you can do. Number one, make it stickier. Number two, make it uh, heavier or somehow have an, a larger supporting force. Um, there's a graph that I pulled out of your book too. It's this graph right here, it, the kinetic frictional force. Uh, so the, the bigger your normal force is, so I've got a really large normal force, um, the kinetic frictional force, I have to go way up here to find the kinetic frictional force. Uh, so the more, the more normal force you have, the bigger your force of friction. So here's the first um, example problem that I want to go through. <clears throat> it says you push a 25 kilogram wooden box across the floor at a constant speed. 
Um, and, and you, if you haven't learned by now, this constant speed thing tells you a lot about what's going on in the problem. I got this box, and I know that it's 25.0 kilograms, and I'm pushing it with some... So the first thing I'm going to do is a free body diagram. So I, I've already started because that's just my, my normal, what I want to do. I see a problem, I start drawing it in a, as a picture. So I know that it has a constant speed. My velocity is this way at one meter per second. And I know that there are forces acting on this. I know that gravity is pulling this thing down. Uh, I know that there's a, a normal force up. Uh, I'm pushing it with some push force. Now, actually, maybe what I want to do is just show you that the, the push force doesn't have to be the same as gravity. It can be bigger. It could be smaller. I'm just going to draw it bigger. But here's the thing. Friction is back here. Uh, is friction smaller than the push force, the same size as or bigger than? It turns out when it says constant speed, that's the key right there. When it says a const you have a constant speed, that means that your frictional force is the same size. So this force of friction is the same size as my push force. And that's actually what it says. It says how much force do you exert <coughs> on the box. So that's what we're looking for is the push force. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find this guy, frictional force, and then it's going to be the same. So I'm going to find it that way. So what I'll do, uh, I'll say that the force of friction is the coefficient times the normal force. Um, I know the coefficient of friction. Uh, I, I, ooh, okay, so it's wooden box across a wooden floor. So I'm thinking they're asking me to look back in my book at this table here where it says wood on wood. So I'm push, it's sliding, so this wood on wood, I'm going to use this one. 0.2, because if the wood on wood was still, I'd have to, this would be the one I would, I would go with, but it's not, it's sliding, so my coefficient of friction is 0.2, and my normal force uh, is the same as gravity, so my force of gravity is going to be um, 25, 25 times going on. Well, my calculator doesn't seem to be working here. So I'm going to take 25 times 9.8. So if you take, I have another calculator sitting next to me. 25 times 9.8 uh, is 245. So this force of gravity, 245 newtons. And I know that this normal force also equals 245 newtons. It's not always going to be the same. When you have an incline, it will be different. But when you're on flat ground, because your box doesn't accelerate to the center of the earth, does it? nor does it float up in the sky, the normal is going to be equal to uh, gravity. So I know that the normal force is 245. So if I take 245 times 0 0.2, I get 49. So I know that my frictional force is 49 newtons. So that means that my push force is also 49 newtons. Well, and I think I could probably go with 49. Nope, 49. Significant figure-wise, my uh, coefficient of friction only had 2. In it, so my answer can only have two. Just, yep, it only has two. So there's the first problem I use with friction. Now um, you'll notice that this problem was labeled uh, balanced frictional forces. So you, the, when I give you a quiz question, I'm not going to say that they're balanced. You won't get that. But um, here's the, the next example problem. That it says it's unbalanced frictional forces. So again, you aren't going to get this when you see every problem, but you're going to have to infer it by how it moves. So we got that same example problem. We've got a box, same box of 25.0 kilograms, except this time it is accelerating this way at what that's what we're looking for. What is the resulting acceleration? 
Um, if the force that, so we're trying to figure out again, what's my push force? Because I know that this is 490, uh, what did I say it was, 495, 245. So I know that this is 245 newtons. So I know that my normal force, that's gravity. I like to label all my, with their agents. My normal force is 245. And I know that friction is opposing me. Since everything is the same, the force of friction is still going to be that 49. So now, um, is doubled. So I know, actually, my, I know my push force is doubled. So I double 49, that's going to be 98 newtons. So what's the resulting acceleration? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use F equals MA. F equals MA. And remember, the little fine print here, it's the net force. And I've got two opposing, so this force cancels out this force. So, so they're not involved in the net force. So what I've got, I'm going to call this way positive to the right. I'm going to say that uh, my, my push force is going to be the positive one. And I have a negative one, which is um, gravity or friction. M A. So the push, 98. Minus 49, my mass, 25.0, times my acceleration, and that's what I'm looking for. So 98 times minus 49 is 49. So my acceleration, I take 49 divided by 25, and that come up, comes up with 1.96, or 2.0, 2.0 meters per second squared to the right, or well, I don't know if I want to say right because I don't know which way I'm pushing this. 2.0 meters per squared. That's the in the direction of the push. And that's it. That's that's uh, 5.2. It deals with uh, friction. What does friction depend on? Friction depends on two things. It depends on how sticky the surface is, and it also depends on how much normal force there is. So up those two, you get more frictional force. Lower one, you get mo less frictional force. Uh, the coefficient of friction, it's always between 0 and 1. 0 being really slippery, 1 being really sticky. 0.5 being right in the middle. we got a big table of different coefficients of friction. Uh, you can kind of maybe see now how these little jokes make sense. Imagine if you had a, an office chair that's really slippery. Holy cow, you'd want to play with that sucker all day long, which means your productivity goes right down the toilet. Or, you know, if it gets stickier, then you actually start to physically do something. Uh, unless, if you're, if, imagine if your desk chair didn't move. Like, you, you, you couldn't move, turn and move and get around. It would be really... That's why your productivity actually kind of goes down. This guy, XKCD, is actually very funny and very, very clever. So, and you can see the, the, the mu thing here. Cat, Greek letter, get it, mu. Haha. -ha.